hi guys welcome back to my channel so if this is the first time of seeing this beautiful face my name is cynthia and i tell you everything you need to know about north cyprus so don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications whenever i upload a video and if you're returning thank you so much i appreciate so in today's video we'll be talking about student residence permit and how you can go about it so basically the student resident permit is for students and not just any house student just for registered students so back in the day it used to be different things were not online back then so you have to go through a lot of processes from the hospital that they've assigned to you to the immigration office to the tax office and at the end of the day you're gonna get a stamp which i'll put on the screen so you see how it used to look like so uh you're gonna get a stamp on your passport and yeah that's your residence permit but now everything is online you have to register online you know you have to make sure you're a registered student and make sure the information you the school has is relating with the one the immigration system has if it doesn't you have a problem of interacting in the two systems like maybe if you try to log into the immigration website they'll tell you that information that the school has is not the same it's not relating something is wrong you have to go back to the school to figure it out sometimes they make mistake with names especially for foreigners you know they type with the turkish keyboard and maybe sometimes they use the turkish alphabet to write some names so sometimes it's basically in the parents name that they have this problem i've had the issue before so yeah now if this is the first time you want to sign up so you have to go to the immigration website which i'll put on the screen you find a place where you hit sign up and then you fill out all the necessary information don't forget, make sure the information you're filling in is the same as the information the school has. If it's not the same, you'll have a problem with going back to school to rectify it. So now when you fill out that information, you create an account and over time, they are going to send you an email having your username and your password. The username is basically numbers and your password numbers as well. And the password, you can actually change it afterwards, but the username stays the same. Now. If you change school, this username tend to change as well. I, I when I change from one of my schools to the next one, uh, the username changed for me. So they had to update the website. You know, I had to change the school and everything. They had to resend a new username to me, and I had to relog in. It was a bit of a long process because I had to go to the immigration office, like the foreign affairs office, and they had to do all the registration, whatever, whatever. And they told me they'll send me a new code. I can't use the code like the username for the former school for the new school. So it's a bit of uh, here and there. Once you have gotten all this information, the username and the password, you can now log in. Then you move on. They'll now ask if you have a valid health report. Now the health report entails uh, a blood test. So they'll take your blood and also give you the tuberculosis injection, which after three days or after three days you come back. And they will look at it to see if it is inflamed to know if you have tuberculosis now in the blood test they're going to test the hcv antibody test which test if you have hepatitis c they also test the rpr test it's also a blood test which test if you have syphilis and they also test for hiv now if you're clean in all these things they will now upload your blood test to the system and then they open the next stage for you because all these stages are closed you have to finish one before the next one unlocks so now once you select that you don't have a valid health report then they will now bring out a column where you have to make payment which is like 589 as at the time i was making this video so once you make this payment they will now give you a clinic where you go for your blood test now one thing i don't like about this blood test thingy is they give you the clinics based on where your school is. They don't give you clinic based on where you're living. For instance, you're living in Magusa and your school is in Lefkosha. They will give you a clinic that is in Lefkosha. They don't give you based on where you're living. And another thing is you have to find this place. It's not like a familiar clinic that you know. You have to move around, maybe get into a taxi that will take you there or use a map to try to find the place, which is stressful most of the time. But then once you find a place, it's fine. Now the blood test wasn't done initially, it wasn't done every year. We just do it the first year that you come into the school and then everything is fine. But now that it's online, you have to do blood tests every now and then, which I can understand that 
yeah the probability of you know people picking something from time to time might happen maybe the last time you did a blood test you were clean then now maybe you're no longer clean why not just take that money that students pay to the school why can't the school be responsible for that health insurance payments like I don't know if you get where I'm coming from. So I don't like the fact that we do this payment every year. And at the end of the day, you don't really gain anything from it. Except that you're legally staying in the country. That's just my two cents. After the blood test, you move on to the tax section. Now, the tax section is like 100 and something. I can't really remember. Now. I think 182 Turkish Lira. So once you make this payment, your student residence permit is ready. Now, speaking of tax... I don't like the fact that they put in a tax as students you already have some form of tax payments that you make with the school when you're making your school payment like medical insurance and all that and at the end of the day once you have made all these payments while you're paying your school fees you still have to come and pay these payments like this one for your health and then pay for tax again and at the end of the day you're not even working you're not even making anything like why are you paying tax when you're not gaining from the system aside you're just living in the country you're paying rent you're paying bills and when you're doing your permit again you have to pay tax if you're gaining financially from a system and they're taking tax okay yeah it's fine but if you're a student and you're paying tax for not even working or even earning a penny from the country it's sad actually it's i wouldn't say it's fair i wouldn't understand why they're collecting tax from students and this tax payment this health payment is done every year now when you get into the tax payment section that is where you select whether you're paying for six months or one year payment so usually foreigners can only take one year so from there they will now generate the amount if you're picking six months they will generate half the amount if you're picking one year they will generate money for one year for instance there were, when i was graduating i had basically six months to finish my undergrad and i was only allowed to take six months i couldn't take up to one year because my graduation limit the span for my graduation is basically six months so within six months i should finish my program so there was no need for them to give me one year so you make the payment and then voila you're done with your student residence permit and then they'll bring out this slip which you can print out or i, I don't know during this covid time you can only save it on your phone before the covid came they will send this print out to the school and then you go to the school to pick it up now another problem i have with this is why not just make this to be a small id card like make it little but then this thing is an a5 sized paper like a certificate that you you have to hold on to you know you can't carry this around every single time you can just make it look like an id card more like a, a kim leek id because there is this kim leek id that they have turkish citizens have you can make this permit to be as little as that that can fit into a wallet fit into a purse that someone can easily carry around like comfortably but then this thing is as big as an a5 size i don't still understand even when students have complained that it is too big, they still haven't changed it. It's still that same size. Anyway, I like this fact that during this COVID, you have to just either have the e-copy on your phone or you print it out and hold it at home. So before the COVID, once the residence permit, they've printed it and sent it to the school, and they'll now send you a message to your phone and tell you to go to the school to pick up your residence permit. But you still have an e-copy that can cover you within the time that this permit has not been printed. So now in comparison to before when there was no online system and now, I think I prefer now because you can comfortably do this from the comfort of your home instead of going from one office to the other. And sometimes you get there, you find a long queue. Sometimes you get there, they don't even have change to give you. So you have to go back to go find change, you know, because you have to pay cash. Sometimes you have to like the process before was long you have to buy stamp from the post office then go to the immigration office then you go to tax office then you go to clinic like it was a long process and all these places are not even connected so you have to go from here to here so minus spending on transportation you have to find all these places and the inconveniences was just a lot it was too much but now that it's online it's very convenient because all you have to do is just the information the school has should be the same as the one that the immigration office has you do your payment online make all the payments online now another thing about payment is there are certain cards 
that cannot work with this payment for instance some people find it hard to pay with their nigerian atm cards so they have to look for someone that they will give the money to and then the person will make the payment for them which i feel is not convenient all the cards should be able to work with this payment you know you can't just start looking for someone that has oh do you have this bank or oh, do you have this bank or oh, do you have mastercard or oh, do you have visa card so i can pay for my majority it's not really convenient so i think it's something that they have to fix and i feel it's something that they'll fix over time now another thing you notice on their website is due to the progress of your residence permit it's going to show you how much how much progress you have made once you have finished all the registration you have rectified your school you know you've logged in properly all your details are fine it's going to be 40 percent and once you're done with the health report once they've uploaded your health report and you're done with health it's going to upload to 60 percent once you're done with tax it's going to be 80 and once they've uploaded it's 100 so yeah so that's just the progress of the whole thing it's quite easy so yeah that's basically how you can get your student residence permit the procedure is very easy but don't forget you must be a registered student now if you're not a registered student or you have not registered for a very very long time so let's say the last time you did your residence permit was in 2015 now there's something they have that's called amnesty so you have to pay a certain amount of money that's going to cover you within those times that you didn't do your majority but if you're caught and the last time you did your student's resident permit was 2015 the fine that you're going to incur is going to be massive because they're going to charge you each day you have spent on the island and i think each day is like 120 turkish lira and calculate 120 turkish lira times five years or six years as the case may be so that's a lot of money but then amnesty covers all those expenses all those per day charges that you'll be charged for staying in the country illegally once you pay for amnesty it covers for all those years that you stayed without doing your residence permit so if you have stayed on the island illegally and maybe you've not attracted any problem that involved the police and for them to find out that you have stayed illegally you have to do the amnesty to stay covered like the amnesty will cover for all those years instead of when you're caught you'll be arrested you'll be taken to court to know why you've been on the island illegally and then you'll be made to pay a certain kind of fine so to avert all these kind of problems just do the amnesty pay for the amnesty and then you can now go ahead after the amnesty you can now go ahead to do your present residence permit so I might get more information on the amnesty so that I can tell you guys more about it. But for now, this is what I have for you. This is how you can get your residence permit. All the procedures I'll put on the screen so that you can see how it works. So I'm going to make another video talking about all the types of residence permits that there are in North Cyprus. So you might just say I'm not a student and how can I get a residence permit to stay on the island. So I'll do that so that I can know what category you fall into if you're not a student. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed and hit the bell button for notifications whenever I upload a video. And also leave your questions on my social media handle. Talk to me on Instagram. We can chat and talk about whatever problem or issues you're experiencing during your registration and we can actually discuss it. And if it's something I'm not conversant with, I can ask questions to get these answers for you. So don't forget to subscribe, like I said, and also share this video with your friend. It could be helpful to someone. So till I come your way again with another video. Peace.